according to some literature, if there is no sidewind, uh, cyclists can expend up to 90% of their energy overcoming drag forces. If a cyclist is riding without the presence of any wind, the wind direction that they see because of moving is in the same direction as their motion. But as soon as there is a side wind, that apparent wind changes and they see the wind coming from a different direction. What we've been looking at is how we can position a second cyclist different locations to minimize the forces acting on that second cyclist. I had two senior students, Adam Lovell and Tyler Cunningham, work with me on this project. They were seniors last year and they were also on the cycling team, so they had plenty of cycling experience. We had small-scale experiments in a wind tunnel. One interesting thing that we discovered was that the first cyclist benefits from the other cyclist behind him, and the forces acting on him are slightly decreased compared to if he, were, he or she were to ride along. And then the fourth cyclist, or, or the last cyclist in our configuration, seemed to have larger forces acting on him compared to the second and third. And you can think of this as a train. The front will experience a lot of the drag. The back will experience some of the drag as well because of a low pressure region behind it. But then the cars in between are shielded by the rest of the train. And they still experience drag and friction, but not as much. So they're in the middle.